Okay guys, as promised, I'm going to demonstrate, this is my house, um, some of the um, joint movements that we talked about in chapter nine. So if you have your handout, your chapter nine handout, it's on page three. Um, it's also on page 308 in your textbook, but um, the first one, and I might do standing up and sitting down so you get a better view. Um, so the first one is gliding. And the example there was like a royal wave. So people don't wave their hands like this when they're on a parade. They kind of do this. And so it's just very gentle rolling of the wrist and the bones in the wrist are just gliding past each other. We haven't learned all the bones in the wrist, so don't worry about those yet, but they're just kind of gliding past each other. Next, flexion and extension. These undo each other. So the easiest way you're already, you already know these is like flex your muscles. So you tell a child to flex their muscles and they're going to take their arm back up a little bit and they're going to go here. This is a flex. So what it does is you have this straight angle and you are decreasing the angle. So you're making an angle, an acute angle. So that's flex. Extension is to increase the angle. So that's undoing. So that'd be opening your arm. So flexion, extension. It's kind of like an aerobics class in here. Next, abduction and adduction. This has to do um, with the shoulders and the hips. So let me stand up. So when you're going to, I usually demonstrate this with the legs because most people that have gone to the gym are familiar with the machine, uh, or the two machines that do this. So um, abduction is away from the midline. So on the leg, if you put your weight on one foot and then you lift the leg, this is abduction. So away from the midline. To undo that, you adduction. You have adduction. So you add to the midline. So that's towards the midline. So um, abduction, adduction. Abduction, Adduction also works with the arms. So that would be abduction, adduction. Next one, circumduction. This has to do with the thumb. And so that's moving in a cone shape. So if you take your thumb and you just move it around like you would do a thumb war kind of thing. So move your thumb. You can see it's, it's going in a cone shape because here this can't move very much, but the top of your thumb can. So you're making like an ice cream cone shape. Next, pronation and supination. This has to do with your hand. So start with your hand, just like you're gonna shake hands, which we're not supposed to do right now. So don't actually shake anybody's hand. So palm out like you would go to shake someone's hand. Now, supination is where you're going to turn so your palm is up. So it's like an open palm, give me money, please. So here is supination. Pronation is palm down. So palm down. If you've played sports, uh, particularly racket sports, uh, possibly volleyball, you've probably heard about the, the importance of pronating the wrist um, in handling the racket. So here we go. Supination, pronation. Supination, palm up. Pronation, palm down. These next two have to do with the feet. Or, well, next two sets. So four movements have to do with the feet. All right, first one is dorsiflexion. So look at my feet here. That is, so if you have an, if you have an even foot, again, my balance is good, so don't make fun of me for having my foot on the wall, or my hand on the wall. So if you have just a neutral foot here, dorsiflexion is toes up. So like a flex, so like you're gonna take a nice step. So dorsiflexion, or if you want to walk on your heels, that's pretty hard to do, but you can do it. So walk on your heels, dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion is like the ballerina. So if you have a neutral foot, pointing the toes. So pointing the toes, or so like a ballerina in point shoes, I did not dance, but so walking on your tiptoes, that would be plantar flexion. So here, uh, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. I encourage you to do these exercises along with me. Next, inversion and eversion. These are gonna be very difficult to see because I don't have flexible ankles, but I'm gonna do the best that I can. So inversion, if you take your foot 
and you just have it out neutrally. So this is a neutral foot and inversion, your sole is going to face medially. Remember medially is the midline of the body. So you're going to twist to where your, the sole of your foot is facing the midline of your body. Again, I can't do this without moving my knee as well. So that's the sole facing medially. Let's go back to neutral foot. Eversion, the sole faces laterally to the outside. I'm even worse at this one. So, inversion, eversion. So this goes to the inside of the body, to the outside of the body. Inside, outside. Turn the page. There's just a few more of these. These next two sets, so four exercises, have to do with the shoulders and the jaw. So, protraction and retraction. I'm going to demonstrate with the jaw first. Protraction would be making an underbite. So, that would be taking and sticking your bottom teeth out like this. So, that would be protraction. Retraction is the other way around, pulling your jaw back in. So, you tend to do that when you smile. So, just pull your jaw in and smile. So, uh, protraction, retraction. Maybe from the side, protraction, retraction. All right, now you can also do this with the shoulders. So I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see my shoulders. So protraction would be bad posture, so like this, like the turtle. So protraction and retraction, nice, good, strong posture. So protraction, retraction. Elevation and depression. With the jaw, this refers to the chewing motion. So, depression, ah, uh, jaw moves down. Elevation, jaw moves up, so. So, snap your teeth a few times. So, open, close. So, elevation, moving the jaw up. Depression, moving the jaw down. Same thing with the shoulders here. Um, you can see this from the front. This is just gonna be moving the shoulders up. So, you elevate the shoulders, bring them up to your ears, and then depression, pull your shoulders back down. So just make a nice big shrug. Elevation, depression. Oh, it's a nice relaxation exercise. The last one is opposition and also has to do with the thumb. And so an opposable thumb means you, your thumb is able to, take, to touch all the fingers on the same hand. So, so when you're taking these off, you're like one, two, three, four. Same thing on the other one, two, three, four. It, it does not mean that it does not mean this. That is not an opposable thumb. Fingers of the same hand. So those are the primary uh, joint movements. Um, you are not responsible for any of the actual bones involved in those movements yet. All right. Good luck studying, and um, let me know if you have any more questions.